So I just watched the Barbie movie and it got me thinking about something. The color pink does not exist. If you look at a rainbow, you'll see that pink is not there. Pink is not a color of light. Pink is a color that our brains invent. Now, to fully understand that, we have to first talk about what color is and how we see color. So in reality, in physics, light doesn't have a color. Light just has a specific frequency or a specific wavelength. The thing that gives color to light, that gives color to our world, is our brains. When our brains receive, let's say, 650 nanometer light, our brains interpret that and go, okay, that's red light. Or if we receive a signal of 550 nanometer light, our brains receive that and go, okay, that's green light. But light itself doesn't have a color. Light just has a wavelength, and the color is how our brains interpret that light. Now, the way that we can see light in the first place is because at the back of our eye, we have these special photoreceptor cells that are sensitive to light called rod cells and cone cells. Rod cells are extremely sensitive, but they can't distinguish between colors. They can just distinguish whether or not they're receiving light and what intensity, how much light they're receiving. So our rod cells, they're good for motion, they're good for peripheral vision, but they do not see color. Our cone cells, however, are not as sensitive as our rod cells, but they can distinguish between colors. They can distinguish between different wavelengths of light. So each of these cones in our eyes are sensitive to a different wavelength of light. So we have long wavelength cones, cones that are sensitive to medium wavelengths, and cones that are sensitive to short wavelengths. But for the sake of simplicity, we tend to call these the red, green, and blue cones. So when red light enters our eyes, our red cones get activated, send a signal to our brain saying, hey brain, I got a signal of 670 nanometer light, here it is. And the brain goes, okay, thank you for that, I processed that, and that's red light. Cool. Same thing happens for blue. Blue light enters our eye, our blue cones get excited, they send a signal to our brain, we see blue. Same thing for green, green cones get excited, blah, blah, blah. So cool, that's how we see color. But wait, there's something wrong with that. There's more than three colors of light. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. What about pink? Right now, maybe you can accept for a moment that there's something fishy about pink because it's not even in the rainbow. So maybe there's something weird about how we see pink. But yellow? Yellow is a color of light. It's in the rainbow. But we don't have a yellow cone, so how do we see yellow? Well, it has to do with the fact that our cones are not just sensitive to one wavelength. That would be ridiculous. We would need a cone for every single wavelength of light. So, since we only have three cones, there's a very cool workaround for this. Our cones are sensitive to a broad range of wavelengths, and those ranges overlap. The way we see color is not just, oh, our red cone fired, so we see red. The color that we see is actually a combination of how much each cone fired. So let's take a look at an example. This is a diagram that shows the different ranges of wavelengths that our cones are sensitive to. Okay, so let's take a look at yellow light. What happens when we receive yellow light in our eyes? If real, true yellow light hits our eyes, our red cones will be activated a little bit, but so will our green cones. So our brain receives a signal that the red cones got excited a little bit and the green cones got excited a little bit. Okay, a little bit of green, a little bit of red, and interprets that as yellow. Fantastic, okay, so that's how we see yellow but that presents a little bit of a problem because that same signal could be sent if a little bit of true red light and a little bit of true green light entered our eyes at the same time. In that situation, our brain would receive the exact same signal, a little bit of red and a little bit of green, and so it would see yellow. Even though there's no yellow light there, your brain would perceive that as yellow. In fact, this is not yellow. Neither is this or this or this. This is just red and green. Your phone screen or your, your computer screen does not have yellow pixels. It only has red, green, and blue pixels. So this yellow square that you're looking at is actually just the red and green pixels in your screen being illuminated and the blue is turned off. If you take a pocket microscope and you zoom in on this, you'll see that it's actually just red and green entering your eye. But again, that's the signal that your brain interprets as yellow. When I get a little bit of green and I get a little bit of red, that must be yellow. And so phone screen manufacturers can abuse this way that we see light and trick our brains into seeing colors like yellow that aren't actually there by only using red and green light. Now, the actual way that our brain calculates the total value of the signal sent to it based on the different excitations of the cone cells is a little bit more complicated. It's called the opponent process theory. And basically it involves these intermediary cells that get the signal from the cones, do a bit of calculation, and then send that calculated signal to the brain that then processes that as color. But this video isn't about that, so we're gonna simplify that whole process and just say our brain averages out the signals that it gets from all the different cones to a specific wavelength or a specific color. So 
To make that make sense, let's take a look at the spectrum and the three different cones. We got our red, green, and blue cones. If we look at our red and green cones, when both of those are excited, like we just talked about, we see yellow light. If our brain gets a signal from the red and green cones, it averages it out to what's in between them, yellow. Okay, so it takes those two signals, averages it out to yellow. Same thing works for cyan. If we get green and blue cones activated, our brain averages those out and we get cyan. Okay, so maybe that's how our brain sees color. It averages out the signals from the different cones. Well, let's see what happens if our red cones are firing and our blue cones are firing and our brain averages it out, we get green. But wait, our brain starts to panic. I can't be seeing green because my green cones aren't firing. I'm only having red cones and blue cones fire, so it can't be green because my green cones would be firing. Uh, invent a color. And it just invents pink. It just invents pink to solve this problem. It literally makes up a color to solve a problem to deal with a situation that it can't figure out. It thinks it's supposed to be seeing green based on the way that we see color, but the green cones aren't firing, and so it just invents pink. That's, <laughs> I think that's so cool. Now what I think is super cool about this is there's no way for us to know if the color that I call pink, that my brain invents, is the same color as the color that your brain invents. That's really cool. Now. Take a look at this yellow square, right? Stare at the black dot at the center of this yellow square. In a moment, I'm gonna remove this yellow square and show you a white screen. Ideally, what you should see is a blue or a violet light. The way that works is, remember, right now, red and green light are being sent into your eyes. So your red and green cones are being activated, but your blue cones aren't. Over time, our cones get dulled, they get weakened. And so right now, as you're staring at this yellow square, your red and green cones are becoming dulled. Now let me show you a white screen. Here it is. Hopefully that worked for you. Hopefully you saw blue or purple. The reason this works is because your red and green cones were dulled by looking at that yellow square that was really just red and green light, but your blue cones were fine, they were fresh. And so when I show you white light, which on your computer screen, your phone screen, is red, green, and blue, your red and green cones are dulled, but your blue cones are fine, and so your blue cones dominate and you see blue light. I think that's so cool. All right, final illusion. This one's really cool. It works immediately. Take a look at this plus sign surrounded by these pink circles. Very soon, it's probably happening already, you'll notice that the pink starts disappearing and gets replaced by a green light. The way this works has to do with both how we see pink and this dullness of our cones. It was a good illusion to tie the video together. <laughs> so what happens here is the pink light is activating your red and blue cones, but as soon as the pink light gets taken away, the gray that's left over, and gray is really just a dulled white, the gray is sending red, green, and blue light into your eye. But since your red and green were dulled, you mostly see green light. And that's where that green light surrounding the plus sign that you're probably seeing right now is coming from. It's coming from the fact that you were seeing pink, but then your red and blue got dulled. And so when you saw red, green, and blue, the green dominated and you see green. I think this is such a cool illusion. Now, this whole video was about how pink doesn't exist and it's just a color our brain invents. But in reality, all colors are colors that our brain invents. Like I said at the beginning, light does not inherently have a color. It just has a wavelength. Color is just our brain's way of processing and dealing with all these different wavelengths of light. So all colors are invented in our brain. I just think pink is the coolest because it doesn't actually have a wavelength of light associated with it. It's a complete brand new concoction from our brain. And I think it's really cool that we kind of live in a black and white world. And the only thing that gives color to our world, the greens, the blues, the reds, and even the pinks is our brains. All right, I hope you found that interesting. If you did, click that subscribe button to stay curious and I'll see you in the next one. And if you wanna see any of my other videos, you can click any of these links here to go to that video. Bye everybody.